and the words of the prophetess, Miss Erica Badu. Now, keep in mind that I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my sh What's going on guys? I'm Jasmine and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. My creative corner, I like to call it. I wanna to talk to you about creativity. First, I wanna to talk to you about kind of my recent path to creativity. And then I'll just give a couple of ways that I've increased my creativity in my life as of late. I think a lot of people don't think that they are creative people. And I would say that everyone is created. I think I've even written on my blog before, shameless plug, dreamsofjasmine.com. I think I've even written on there that I believe we were created to create. And perhaps we don't look at work um, as in our like nine to five or um, our day to day activities as opportunities to create. Um, but I think that every moment is an opportunity to create. And perhaps this comes from like my perspective that um, we're in constant co-creation with the creator, right? This mindset is kind of what like blew up creativity in my life. A couple of years ago, I know I've mentioned in videos before, I'd kind of come to this like, almost like a crossroads in my life where I could continue to be who I was or I could become something different and I felt st a strong pull to become someone different and essentially the person I'd always wanted to be. And that person was extremely creative. And I think to me, when I thought of creativity originally, I just thought of like writing, painting, music, uh, maybe like making movies, kind of what society considers creatives. Even today it could be social, social media content creators, things of that nature. As I started to explore what creativity meant to me, and as I started to learn and play with the idea that I am co-creating my entire life, I really started to curate and cultivate and create in as many moments of my life as I can. That's been very freeing for me. That's actually changed my life quite a bit. While writing has always been a way that I expressed myself, I just felt like I needed other mediums. Um, it, had, it had started to feel like writing was the only way that I could express myself. Writing was the only way that I could be creative. And I had really come to like a stagnant place in my writing journey where it wasn't flowing the way that it used to. It wasn't coming through the way that it used to. And I just felt called to be creative in other ways. And so that led me to painting. Shout out to my friend Simone if you're watching. But um, my friend and I decided to take a painting class together. One area where we both really identify with each other is this desire to be perfect, this perfectionism, this kind of like people-pleasing path that we had both taken in our lives. And we were just having a conversation one day and we decided to take a painting class together. And the second that we started I'm talking the first lesson. I knew that was exactly what I needed to be doing and I knew that was exactly where I needed to be. Shortly after we started taking painting lessons, I think maybe we did four lessons and then the kit, I knew that with the weight of what was happening in the world that I was gonna need to continue to express myself creatively. And so I went on Amazon and, and I got a bunch of um, paint by numbers for me and my family. My mom, my sister and I would just sit at the dining room table and paint. And so in the early pandemic, painting truly became like this self-care tool for me. It was kind of like killing two birds with one stone. I could be creative and I could also um, kind of take care of my mental because I find that when you set an intention, when you are intentional about what it is that you're gonna create, it almost becomes like a mindful activity where all you can really focus on is the task at hand because you're fully in it. You're fully focused on it. It was almost like this really Least that I didn't even know that I needed. And so since painting was so successful, it just made me think about how many other ways in my life I could be creative. 
Simultaneously, in the beginning of uh, the world changing, a lot of people were baking to cope. And the thing about cooking or baking is it's the same kind of process, right? Where you have to be mindful, you have to kind of pay attention, you have to kind of like vibe with it and flow with it. And so for me, that came in the form of baking chocolate chip cookies or making banana bread, making like really extravagant meals for my family. And, and so cooking became um, a way for me to express myself. Baking became a way for me to express myself and be creative. As time has gone on, I've continued to connect with my inner child. And one thing that I loved when I was a teenager was fashion. I started um, expressing myself through dressing again, through color, through jewelry, through my hair, through my shoes. Also, I joined this like screenwriting cohort because um, screenwriting is always something that I wanted to do. It's a lot. Um, you really have to throw yourself into it, but I've really been enjoying the process of learning. I feel like that's been so key, is enjoying the process and not focusing so much on what the outcome is gonna be, not focusing so much on what your final product is gonna be. And the thing about um, getting into my screenplay writing was it was so fun to be around other people who wanted to do the same work that I wanted to do. I also figured out that I wasn't quite ready to start writing again. And so being creative has been this like kind of continual process of me trying to figure out um, where it's been like a domino effect where it's like when I try something over here it opens a door over there when I try something here it opens a door over there then this summer uh, shortly after I left my job I took an abstract painting course online but something that she said that stuck with me so deeply that I still refer back to every time I sit down to do just about anything these days um, she was saying that she paints what she feels and I had never thought of it like that. You know, you hear these artists, musicians, um, talk about how they have a lot of feelings and how music or art in whatever capacity is a way that they express their feelings. But I had never heard someone kind of explain it in that way. She said, I take a moment to drop into my body and, and just feel what I'm feeling. And then I just allow myself to paint. And I really was able to connect with that, I think, because I learned recently the way that I write actually has like a word to it. It actually has like uh, an, identif an identifier called automatic writing. According to Wikipedia, it's also can be called spirit writing. And it is automatic writing, also called psychography, is a claimed psychic ability allowing a person to produce written words without consciously writing. Writing produced involuntarily. Automatic writing is the process or product of writing without using the conscious mind. So this is how I've always written my whole life, especially when I'm in the zone. I can't really explain what the zone feels like to me. Unless I have like a specific assignment, unless there's something specific I'm supposed to be writing, I don't have like, um, I don't have a thought, I don't think, like there's no thought that comes to my mind before I write what's on paper, if that makes any sense. Oftentimes I'm reading what I've already written down. I don't know if that makes any sense. Let me know if any of you all are writers and you now realize that perhaps you are a spirit writer or an automatic writer. That's just how I've written since I was a kid. Now that I know, I'll have to tap in a little more. I also have been more intentional about um, expressing myself through photography just on my iPhone. If something inspires me, I lean into it. Another pathway to creativity that I took was a somatic writing course. I think it was called Visceral Verse, um, but I took it with this lovely young woman named Afroz Ahmed, and um, it was so simple, but it was more impactful even then than I realized but essentially we would um, feel into our bodies, we would observe the things around us, um, we would read poetry, um, and then we would write our own. We would write whatever kind of came out of us. And that really, not only outside of being creative, really helped me to get more in touch with how I'm feeling at any given moment. <sighs> like how right now I need to take a deep breath. 
that course really helped me introduce ritual into my creative practice. And then most recently, I took a ceramics class um, where we were throwing on the wheel and creating our own little bowls and vases and things that just ended up flying off the wheel because we also weren't experts in that. Shout out to all the potters out there. Um, it's such a process and it, it requires feeling like I, that's one major thing that I've learned is like it all requires you to get out of your head, get into your body, get into your heart and really feel your way through the process. And if you don't feel your way through the process then the end goal is never going to be satisfying. But what I'm finding with implementing more creativity into my life is that the process becomes so satisfying when I'm intentional about it, when I'm aware of what I'm learning as I'm going, when I'm go through the motions of uh, releasing the imperfection um, when I feel the feelings of imperfection or self-doubt creeping up as I'm creating things and I work through them with my art like it's just been such a freeing journey and so now I kind of want to transition into some of the things that have just helped me be more creative so like I was saying with all of the many things that I just named off just trying new things you know I think a lot of us who are even creative in certain ways really limit ourselves to only being able to be creative in one way. Um, at least for me, trying new things that I had never tried before really sparked divine inspiration and helped me to sharpen some of these other creative skills that I had. Speaking of divine inspiration, you know, creating a ritual around being creative has been really good for me. I still haven't quite um, gotten exactly like my creative situation down but what I do oftentimes do is light a candle um, and it kind of just like shifts my mindset it's like all right the candles lit there's a new smell like let, let let's get to it you know but I know that a lot of people who create on a daily basis have like a ritual around creating and I think this was also brought up in this book that was recommended to me I wish I could remember who recommended me this book because I'm so grateful for it but it's in my lap actually it's called the artist way a lot of people are familiar with the concept of morning pages if you're not you can just look it up there's a lot of info on it. I didn't really resonate with the morning pages aspect, but honestly, just the introduction of this book kind of shifted my perspective about how creativity and spirituality are connected. She suggests something in here where you should have artist dates with yourself, where you have a day on the calendar or scheduled time where you're going to be creative so that being creative can be a priority in your life. And I think that's really important. If you just don't even know where to start and this video, is just not helpful to you at all. I highly suggest the book, The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. Um, no matter what faith, religion you are, I think it's helpful and it's definitely geared towards all of us. What I think this book helped me to kind of shift my mindset around and kind of apply to my own life is that there can, that creativity can be found in every moment, that I am a divine being creating my life in step with the creator and we can make every moment creative. Uh, as I started to look at creativity as an opportunity to um, get in tune, get in alignment with the divinity within myself. Um, creativity started just kind of like falling in my lap, you know, which just started happening really easily. All in all, I think the biggest lesson that I've learned and what I'm most grateful for as far as my creativity journey is concerned was this concept of something can be imperfect and still be beautiful. For so long, I didn't want to express myself creatively because I was so concerned about what other people would think about what I created, compared myself to other people, the things that I was creating weren't as valuable, weren't as cool, weren't as good, um, weren't um, reflective of my mastery or were too reflective of my lack of mastery. The thing is now creativity has become um, a do or die for me. It has become a way that I move my emotions through my body, a way that I process my emotions, a way that I make myself feel better when I'm feeling low. And so I think my biggest tip that I could um, drive home is to just um, be secure in your process. Oh, I was going to say when it comes to creating things is both doing things intentionally within a group and intentionally 
by myself. When I started painting, I started incorporating painting into my hangouts with my friends. I would just ask them if they wanted to paint, and we, if they wanted to paint, I'd ask them if they wanted to paint, and we'd drink wine and paint and doodle. I've done it with my mentee. We've gone out and we've painted things. I've done it with my mom and my sister, and every time I do it with other people, they're like, wow. I mean, even just taking classes, um, my ceramics class, there was just one other lady um, in the class with me, and we had so many good little chats about our process and how we felt during them, and it was so cool um, to see how we were essentially making like the same things, but they looked different just because we're two different people and not because one of us is better than the other. So I'd really encourage um, trying group creativity and then taking that back and uh, just unleashing behind closed doors, you know, just like setting the mood in your, in your own space, in your own time to do whatever it is that, it, that you want to do whatever and create and create whatever it is that you want to create without judgment, without fear, without comparison, um, which is going to be my final tip. And don't judge yourself at all, but definitely don't judge the things that you create. What I found is like, sometimes I just have to get something out. Sometimes I just need to like scribble. Sometimes I just need to draw. Sometimes I just need to write and it doesn't have to be perfect. No one's ever going to see it, you know, or if I want to show it to somebody, I will, but I will because I'm proud of it, not because I want them to judge it and tell me what they think of it. You know, I just want to share my creativity with other people and hopefully inspire them to be creative as well. I think for so long, I was so scared to express myself in different ways. For example, with screenwriting, I hadn't like thrown my whole life into it at this point. And so I felt sometimes like a fraud being in those spaces because um, I didn't go to film school or I hadn't written 30 scripts. But the thing is, no one else was looking at me like that. It was just me, you know, and art and creativity has been a lot more telling of what I believe about myself than what other people think of me. You know, I just sometimes think of the years that went by um, of me feeling inadequate and, and, and unvaluable and unworthy of creating things because I just had the whole, I had a completely because I just had a, a different perspective. I'm so happy to be in this space now. I feel like I'm so much happier since being creative, even with my channel. I've been trying to just take a more creative approach with it and make it fun, you know? Creat being creative has been so much more fun than like being so serious or being so straight-laced about everything, which I can be sometimes. <laughs> it's been a freeing process. It's been an inspiring process. It's almost like inspiration begets inspiration. Let me know in the comments about the last time you did something that was creative, how it made you feel. Let me know if you stopped being creative and how you'd like like to be creative going forward. If you've always been creative and always found different ways to express yourself, tell me why and um, if there's some things you think I should try, let me know. I'm always looking for new things to try. I think next I want to try flower arranging and sewing. So that's what I've got on my list right now. Let me know what you have on your list to try. Put the date on it, put it on the calendar, pay the money, and uh, let's all create something super cool together. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, for hanging out with me um, whenever you are hanging out with me, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.